Hey guys, Joshua Peterson here, Peterson Electric. Um, this is going to be a second video to this basement roughed in in Thompson River Ranch. It is going to be the first week of May of uh, 2020. Uh, we're eighth week into COVID. This video is going to be about an unfinished basement. Uh, I'm trying to help you out with a little bit of understanding with the load calc. Uh, it's not going to be exact and it's not going to be the same for everybody. But some of the things you have to keep in mind is really important. Um, so I want to show you real quick, just refresh you if you didn't find the other video. Uh, it's about 600 square foot, maybe a little bigger, um, but it's a closet in here. We have a bathroom in here. So as I take you through the room, I want you to keep in mind a couple quick things. Number one, I wire in a circuit down there for my boudet toilets. My bidet. I think I said that wrong. Bio boudet is what I got. Um, I do wire in typically, yeah, one outlet for the sink because there's only one sink. Keeping in mind that my box is important, that it's going to mount correctly in the right height on the mirror. That stuff has to be picked ahead of time. Your vanity, your mirror, and your light fixture before you rough in a bathroom. You have to know all of that. A lot of people don't, but that makes a mess during the time of rough in and trim out. So in here, uh, this is a heat fan light combo kit. They wanted to put one in. You gotta keep in mind, these are dedicated 20 amp circuits, 120 volt. Some come at 240. But this is a heat with a fan to kick it out and you keep it on until it cools down to the thermostat. Then it has an exhaust fan and a light. So all in one unit, you better run a dedicated circuit to that. Uh, in here, this is gonna be shower trim. You like our six inch that are wet rated. This is a walk-in shower. With, keep in mind, if you have a shower head that's coming down the center, they will. You got to keep in mind that where you set that light, okay? So just in here, we got 12 openings. Coming in here is just a small closet. Sometimes we'll put an outlet in the closets that can charge their vacuum or maybe batteries. Here's our sub panel. Very important. Very important. Sorry, very important that this sub panel is not put in a bathroom or in a closet. Could be a large storage area, right? But not a linen closet with clothes and hangers, okay? Uh, it can be in a bedroom, and this is where we all chose to put it because it was way too far away to keep running that wire because actually the panel, we still have to pipe in the garage. Um, there's on the outside, so we have to pipe 30 foot through the bottom of the garage um, on the drywall and then nipple out into the back of the panel tomorrow to bring the power down here. This is going to be a bedroom in here. Important to know if you're doing ceiling fan, ceiling fan rated box. Here's another important factor. Look at the header. It's got a barn door on the outside. That's really important for your switches. You go putting your switches here, and the barn door goes that way, you just covered your switches. And if you did, I can fix it with a uh, Lutron system. But that can be a mess. So when you walk in, you got to keep in mind here, so they want to have a cove heater, right? They don't want baseboard heat. Baseboard heat takes up the bottom where the bed is and the dressers. So we're putting it up there on a cove heat right there. Those are allowed. They're 240 volt rated. I ran a neutral just to be safe, just in case there is a way we can do maybe an RF module or something that could turn it on and off with the remote. So far, I know it has to be thermostat knob, right? And I can reach up like you do in unistat down below on a baseboard heat. So that comes over to here. Those are dedicated. Cannot put those on the bedroom circuit. And that's going to be 240 volt rated. You got to watch your box volume. When you start getting into 12 gauge, 12 3, that single gain is not enough. You got to go to a two gain, and then you can put your cover plate. If I was an inspector and you did that, I would flunk you and make you rip it out, especially after you cut it in. Got to keep that in mind. Very important. Some of these outlets are stupid. But 210, around 52 to 70, says that you have to have a dedicated outlet. Or not dedicated, excuse me, just an outlet if the wall is more than 20 inches wide. And it's not a hallway. Um, so they treat it like that. And it doesn't make sense, right? A barn door here and here's an outlet. You got to have it. Then we go to our 612 rule when we're coming around the walls. Um, so you got to keep that in mind as well. They don't consider that for closets, right? And bathrooms and kitchens. But they do in a livable area. So in here, this is going to be exercise. This is a great little job to show you this. Because they actually wanted some extras put in. Um, we're going to have all of those outlets in the wall yellow. 
12 gauge, 20 amp. AFCI, why? Because she's got um, a Nordic track, she uh, jogs. And so she's gonna put treadmill. They're gonna put these dead weights in here. I did do a backup circuit in case they get another one. Right here. This is gonna be their little nook area for entertainment. Whether they put it here and plug in or whether they put it here and plug in. They wanted the TV up high at a corner. They're gonna mount it with a bracket arm. I told them to put it on this wall in case, because later this is a beautiful wall for a gigantic LCD screen, right? This wall was not. So we wanted the outlet over here. 80 inches is typically okay. It's nine foot ceilings. I could go higher, but a lot of the wall bracket mounts will be like this and it'll cover that outlet. So it'll use as a two for one, but this circuit is dedicated. They first thought they're going to do a glass fireplace with that little flame at 1500 watt. I told them don't. If you're really cold and this basement's cold, put in cove heaters if you don't like baseboard. So we got another one up there, 59 inches. You can get a 73 incher. Surprisingly, their wattage is very low. They're only about 170 watts per linearity foot. First, my baseboard heater, 225 to 250. They do go up in wattage as they age, kind of like an old car um, sucking more gas. Uh, but they, I have seen them pull about 250 watts per linearity foot as they're 50, 30, 40 years old. Compared to normally, there's 225 is what you would count. So in here, this circuit comes around. Though we don't seem like we're going to use all these outlets. Again, still 612 rule. Coming along here. Even if they have shelves here to push in, it still counts. A railing. A glass door it all counts so this right here is going to be a wood here shelves below this is the kids nook a lot of people are doing this so I went ahead and wired in a switch right right here and I did an outlet so they can plug their TV in if they put a TV and then that's gonna come up to a light here and then they want an outlet here do you have to have this to go no by all means no but we don't want this outlet down low if they're going to put in a big bean bag. We don't want the bean bag leaning against an outlet that could spark. So we put it up higher. They're probably just going to plug their laptop and phone and hang out. It is a reading nook, so we need a bright light. We are going to do an indirect LED light, by the way. Right up through here. And then he's going to give me a piece of wood, so it's going to indirect. I got two different things going on there. As you walk into here, here's a kitchen. Well, it, it, people don't want to call it a kitchen, guys. Look, if you're going to put it in a refrigerator and you're going to have a, uh, a microwave mounted on a counter and a garbage disposal, it's not technically a kitchen, right? It's not a wet bar. It's actually a kitchenette. And they don't have a spot in the code that calls it a kitchenette. So some electricians I have seen come in and put one circuit feeding everything. And guess what? That microwave is nuking popcorn, and you're trying to make a um, uh, margarita pop. You pop your breaker. You can't do it that way. Um, so what they're going to do is this is all going to be open except for here, a cabinet and a garbage disposal. So we have a switch up here. We could have done a pressure switch. This is a dedicated circuit, circuit two and two. There is a sink. Now, there is a sink with an oversized with a cutting area. Code talks about to the inside edge of a sink. It's interesting, but the whole unit drops in at 39 inches. So there's about 18 inches right there. That's technically sink too. This is something new I've never seen, so we'll see what the inspector says. But I did put it right up to that edge. Now, he wanted to come in here and use this whole wall here for the shower to actually put in his soaps. Look, if you're going to do that next time, and you're going back to back to your kitchenette because your plumber likes the fact your kitchenette's near your shower... Put in a two by six wall, make it simple. Let everybody share that little space, okay? So right here, this is circuit four. I went ahead and figured out all my circuits before I pulled them to make sure it all fits in my panel and I can get my full breaker spots for my dual function AFCIs and my quads, my twins. Okay, right down here, I don't know if they're going to do, they, they said they're going to do right down here a little fridge and then an ice maker up here and then maybe a microwave. Look, you better have about three circuits sitting in there for all that, especially because you have a garbage disposal, okay? That'll switch loop up. Look, if you switch loop it down, 
remember you have to have even if you do any switch loops you have to have a neutral in all boxes now okay so right here there's a lot of wires but see i like to use these smart boxes but see these are 61 cubic inch 30 number 14s 26 number 12s home run is six and eight also circuit twos in here and also circuit 11 this is where guys really foul up quick Again, you inspectors are coming in going, oh, wait, we got three circuits in here. Okay, first of all, do we have over 300 volts in here? No, we don't. Now, running commercial 277, I could. So you got to be careful. But in residential, nothing's over 240. Look at this. So right here, you are supposed to cut all your grounds in together. I never do that. I want all my grounds separated. Why would you tie all your grounds together when you have a problem and you're gonna use a toner and figure out what the hell's going on and the grounds go everywhere and your toner's like, where does the circuit go? I disagree with that inspector. If he flunks me on it, I'll call him up. We'll do some arguing. I'll come back, I'll pinch it. But I'm definitely not gonna practice that way. Because if circuit 11 is failing, especially with arc faults now, you have to be able to trace it quicker and more sensitive. Now, I typically don't put a lot of different circuits together in the same box, but this one has to. I have an outlet, right? Because I don't know how far that sink's coming. And he might want to put his phones or a shelf. I have right here a garbage disposal and right here a light. Okay? Because you can't put your light with garbage disposal. I could do it and get away with it. You probably never catch it, but you're not supposed to. The bottom line is right here. This is going to be arc faulted circuit 11 for in here. This is going to be circuit six and eight. Why did you six and eight? Because there was a bit of a bear getting through all that ceiling. So I brought in six for the garbage disposal and I took out eight and I jumpered it over to here. To here. Because he's got a freezer. See that freezer right there? That freezer is going right here. And it does fit. But that circuit should be dedicated. Now, it doesn't draw that much, maybe three amps, but I'm going to have the ability here to pull down and put another outlet in this unfinished area that will always stay unfinished if they get a fridge. And I'll have enough room in that circuit for him. Circuit 8, you said, what is that box right there? Well, let's go look at it. This is going to be, I haven't ran it yet. This is my last thing to run is my Cat5 wire. But I got my low voltage wire coming in here because this is where my transformer is going. And you got to have a four gang to put in a little transformer and then you're going to have circuits six or eight feeding out that way and then six coming down. But the point of the matter is that you want to switch your transformer on and off to do your low voltage and your low voltage lighting is going to come out of here, which is your class two wire. OK, so speaker wire is really good. I like to use that stuff, but that stuff comes up and it's shielded. It's not that crappy rubber stuff. It's the yellow one that's shielded. I like that stuff. It's like a 14 gauge stranded. No, nah, I think it's a 16 stranded, but I like stranded more than solid. I'll give you that. So anyways, I'll take up three runs, right? And we're going to take one and we're going to come over here, come down and we're going to come up. We're coming into this little cove and he bought this. I like this. This is E, E niche is a niche, whatever. We're going to make up our splice, tuck it down and run an LED tape here. I'll have to buy it in like a 12 foot section and throw most of it away. But they're going to put in a shelf so they don't see our splice. And then we're going to light that. Okay. The next switch leg is going to jump off and daisy chain and go to this right here. And then the last one's going to come over and go right here. And it'll shine down. So if I don't want that on for task, I'll have an indirect with an arch he's going to put in. And then we'll have an indirect with an arch and an indirect with an arch. And that's going to be kind of like the accent lighting. In here, we have a ceiling fan going in, and then over here, we didn't have a way. We could have done a rectangle, but over there, we don't want to wash the TV. You never want to wash the TV with these LED lights, and they want cool white. So right here, we're going to do a marquee design, and then we're going to put in that, and that's all on one switch. And then this guy over here is all by himself, but we're going to put one switch. These Nora trims that I use are really bright, so they're going to definitely one is going to light this little area up just fine. And we have a switch right here. Keep in mind that when your bedroom is in the back of all this area and it's an island, you've got to have a three-way system to walk out and walk out of here to go upstairs, okay? You also have to transfer over your old wiring that was already down here and demo that out and figure that out. And that's where these had a keyless and now these are going to be two Nora trims. He did have to drop this down 
to put some shim because of this plumbing that was there. Okay, he'll, he'll wrap that beam and do a transition. Some people decide to paint it. Keep in mind when you're trying to get an estimate with electrical, if you have a grid ceiling, your expense goes up because there is a new code since 2017 and this got me really bad on a little commercial unit. I had to go back and eat nine hours. That one sucked. You probably saw that video, I was pretty upset. All because the owner didn't want me to talk to the fire marshal or it was safe built, um, which was out in Windsor. So the point of the matter is, is that the minute you put in a grid ceiling, either light commercial or residential, you have to use MC cable or ENT um, uh, blue smurf pipe, okay? Not Carflex, not EMT, but you gotta use some type of metallic or harder conduit. You can't use Romex in the ceiling no more. So people come down and they're doing all these cool grid crazy ceiling. They can get into their grid ceiling later. It's really spongy and light, that's fine but you're gonna go up in price for all that MC cable to get through. And when you do that, we're no longer using nail-on boxes. We will be screwing metallic four square deep with round mud rings, depending on the depth, to the side of the stud. Or worse, we'll have to get bracket arms and come back once the grid's up and they're always gonna put their grid in and then we'll have to push all the ceiling tile out of the way, make sure we don't scratch it or it breaks to put in our bar so then we can put in our light. Again, the MC cable coming down the wall is going to no longer be going into a smart box, a Carlon box, or an Allied box. Nothing fiberglass or plastic. It'll have to be a metal box so you can bond it. And your box volume is a lot different. It's not as deep on a four square. And then you have a bracket design. So again, all that above head, when you, the minute you go to a grid ceiling, it costs more. The other thing is if you're going to stay all cement and and uh, paint it or swirl it, finish it, you now have to be GFCI'd on everything. You are no longer considered a complete finished area. This The ground is ground and it's cement. So what we would have thought like, oh, well, I'm going to put down a rug. That doesn't count. You know, it has to be a wood floor or carpet pinned to the floor with the tacking because that then makes it non-combustible, or excuse me, that makes it uh, non-conductive. So um, anyways, keep this in mind as you're designing. As you can see, this little basement's got a lot going on. Let's go over here real quick, last thing. Again, if your old house doesn't have an egress window, you better have an egress window, okay? Because if it doesn't, you're wasting your time. Inspector will get you on that. That is a fire department rule now. Why do we set sub panels in the basement? Very important. I have 13 circuits right here, 11 home runs. There's a lot. Why is that possible? So when a guy called me the other day, he's like, yeah, I'm just putting in like maybe four or five circuits for a basement and need a 125 amp panel. I'm like, where'd you get your load calc? Like if you have a basement that's a thousand square foot and it's all open and finished, you're gonna have a few circuits. The only thing you really I'm gonna question you on is heat and exercise equipment. Other than that, it's not gonna have a ton of circuits, right? But the minute you start dividing up rooms and that little kitchenette area, which is like, what is that? Like four by 10, little 40 square foot or 35 square foot right over there. That little guy right there is taking up four circuits right there, bam, right away, right? The bathroom in here, I got 12 openings. But in that bathroom, I've got one, two, three, four, five circuits. Well, why so many? Well. Well, I may have four. I'm sorry, I got four. But imagine if you have steam shower, you get five, six circuits, and then you got a, you know, 40 amps on a steam shower. If you're doing a steam shower, that is 40 amp. You have to pull probably close to 100 amps down here. And if you're gonna do a hot tub and a steam shower, you do need probably close to 100 to 125 amp for your sub panel. So keep in mind that when you're doing this in here and you're setting your sub panel and you're looking at your load, you know, we're looking at the fact of what we're putting in. So I think I'll go through one more video because this is getting long, but this was kind of the layout. It's a great basement, right? Very small, universal. It'll sell well. She's got a permit, but we've got cove heaters going on, not baseboard heating down low to take up space. We've got ceiling fans. We've got exercise room. We even put in to make sure the wire was bigger for all the exercise equipment that could be put on instead of white, it's yellow. So it's gonna be 12 versus 14, which is 20 amp versus 12, uh, 15 amp circuit. And um, heat in the bathroom. Even got a little uh, uh, 
a Boudet uh, circuit right down there for the toilet. And you might say, oh, that's not going to be accessible, Joshua. Well, the GFI is going to be in the panel, okay? So how often do outlets go out? 40 years? If she ever uses it. GFI protection is really accessible. The outlet, you can take out with a ratchet and just cut it off. We'll leave it long. Put on another outlet, shove it in. So keep that stuff in mind. Um, smoke CO2 detector is very important to have. Taps off the circuits up above. Demo out your old wiring. Cross that over like you, you're supposed to. So anyways, guys, a um, little bit more than just calling up and saying pretty just simple and, and easy. This is a lot more into it. This typically three-day rough-in with this many circuits and this detailed. Um, but yeah, guys, thanks for joining us. I'll do one more video. Thanks.